during some of the previous videos, I have spent a few minutes outlining what some of the responsibilities of the TAs and the sys admins are. But just to dedicate some more time to exactly what we need you to do, we've put together this little video. So these are some of the commitments that we agree to for you. And what we agree to do is to provide some support for Adobe Connect, to provide some support for the usage of Vula, our course management platform, to provide lecture material, practical assignments, as well as some other course material to support you for challenges that you as the classroom may encounter, to give you some support for technical issues, which we do think there will be quite a number of. We'll also provide you with updates on the course modules, trainers, and logistics. So if ever anything changes, we do commit to communicate that to you in a timely fashion. We also will be grading all of the assessments that your participants submit, and we do commit to do that. And we do commit to give you some guidance on creating a community atmosphere, right, across all of our classrooms. Now, just to chat a little bit about our class registers, which I have uh, alluded to in some of the previous videos, but this is just some general housekeeping. So what we need to do um, at the start of every session is to actually take an attendance register so what we've done is to create a Google Drive folder for each of your classrooms. You guys will already be aware of where that folder is and where your folder is located because you would have used this to select your successful participants. Now, the classroom staff should have access to the Google Drive folder, but again, please try to not share this with participants. We don't want them to come in and say that they've attended all the sessions if they actually have not. So these are only for your eyes. So please keep it private. We've uploaded an example register outside of all of your classroom folders, but within your the, the, the greater Google Drive folder that contains a just template for a register that you can use um, to track your attendance of your participants. So what we would like you to do is to populate that attendance register with your final list of participants, which you would have selected. And then to, on a, a daily basis, Whenever participants come to the course, you actually just tick that they've been there. And you must please just do this because we do check where the participants have attended all of the classes. And if not, it is um, grounds for us to say that we won't award them the letter of completion as well. So please make that clear to your participants as well, that attendance will be tracked and monitored and is quite important. And all you'll have to do in the spreadsheet is mark whether a participant was present or absent. So this is just an example of what that register looks like. You'll put the first name and last name of the participant on the register, their email address. Please make sure that this is all accurate and it has been copied over from the participant application forms because typically what will happen is a number of you may have added or removed participants as you go along. Um, this should not be happening, but we do know that it does happen on occasion. And this is then the list that I will use to build my final, final master sheet once I um, start tracking student grades and start doing some of that calculations. Um, this will be matched up with my records. So please, if you do remove a participant or a participant stops attending, also just please do alert me so that I am aware and that I'm not tracking anybody that does not need to be tracked. But it's very simple, a template has been made available to you. Um, and so just then track your participants for us. But just as we will be tracking participants, we'll also be tracking you as our staff. So we also have an example staff register and a staff scheduling template that we would like you to use to ensure that um, there is a TA scheduled to attend every session, right? So for every session, you will have to list the name of the TA that is responsible for that session or is meant to be there. This can be one or more people, doesn't have to be one, it can be multiple people. But what we'd like you to try to do as far as possible is to ensure that the participant to TA ratio is fairly reasonable. So what we feel is reasonable is roughly one TA per 10 participants. So if you have 30 participants, we want you to have at least three TAs. 
because this is a more advanced course, the more you have, the better, because we do expect a lot of queries. Now, as I've just said, we have provided a Google spreadsheet template for doing this inside of your classroom Google Drive folder as well. So please go ahead and take some time to complete that scheduling um, register. Now, we want you to all fill out this register, but what we would like to say is that there will be a TA as well as a sysadmin present within each contact session as far as possible. And what we would also like you to do is to nominate a head TA if you have multiple TAs that will take responsibility for doing all of these things and ensuring that these are done in the event that the person who actually applied to host this classroom may not be available. Now, just some final words on communicating with us as the core team. I have, again, alluded to this in some of the previous videos, but essentially queries from participants should be attempted to be resolved locally. So you as the TA or the sysadmin should attempt to at least resolve their queries before they come to us. And then when you're at the point where you need to ask us something, we would like to ask you to please make use of the Vula forum that's appropriate for that session. And then if you cannot absolutely resolve the issue locally, then please then at that point, come and contact us or send us an email. Um, and we will try to resolve your issues as far as possible. And we will also tackle some approaches on how to do this in upcoming slides. So one of the activities that we'd like you to do now is an activity on how to deal with challenges that may arise in your classroom. So what we'd like you to do is, again, as a group, we would like you to brainstorm some potential challenges that might arise in your classroom. And we'd like you to make use of some of the ground rules brainstorming that you've done in day one, part two, which we should have already completed earlier on today. So keeping in mind those ground rules, brainstorm some of the challenges that might come up. Then once you've done this, go through the list of challenges and brainstorm as a group how you can find solutions to each challenge. If the core team can provide support in any way, please let us know on that document how we can again provide you with some support. Then once you've completed all of this, we want you to select your top five challenges and solutions and enter this into the template document, which will be found inside of the day one resources folder. We've put a template there that we'd like you to use for your challenges and solutions, right? Once you have done all of this, we'd actually like you to take these challenges and solutions and copy and paste it into the question and discussion forum for today, which will be staff training challenges and solutions. I'll put that up um, shortly if I haven't done so already and you'll paste your challenges and solutions there. Now, very important, if your classroom encounters a challenge, first go and have a look at some of the challenges and solutions thread. All of your classrooms or all of our classrooms would have uploaded their challenges and solutions and other classrooms may have touched on a challenge that you might be experiencing and may have anticipated it and already provided a solution. So again, this way you are all helping each other, you're all forming a community and all the interaction or direction doesn't always have to come from us as the core team. Now, I've again spoken to this at quite a bit of length, but just to put it quite formally, we will have a question and discussion forum where sections and topics will be created um, for each module. So what we would like you to do as the staff is to encourage participants to ask their questions in the appropriate section of the question and discussion forum in addition to during the contact sessions. So again, I have said this before, if participants have questions that we haven't gotten to or that you could not answer locally, please get them to post it into the forum and we'll then come along or somebody else will come along and answer the question for them. Now, these questions are curated and documented and then can benefit others. So please just keep encouraging them to post their questions there. When we create FAQs, a lot of the time it also resolves many, many issues um, or questions that other participants may have already. So this is why we are asking you to do that. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is an example of what the question and discussion forum will look like. 
you will see we would have made one label challenges and solutions for the exercise that I've just asked you to do. Um, we will have a few others which I will touch on later on um, in some of the other videos. But this is essentially what it will look like. And then this is just an example of a question that was asked during one of our IBT course uh, modules. And then just an example of the very elaborate solution or answer to the question that one of the trainers has provided. So again, this was a question that could not be responded to during the live Q&A. The participant came and posted it here and Sean Barker, who was the trainer for that session, could then come and give them a nice elaborate answer. So again, we do look at what gets posted there and we do try to answer it if we can as the core team. If not, we'll instruct the module trainer that there are some questions waiting for them and to please come and answer it. And you can see what, what a lovely interaction this also is between the trainer and then one of our participants. So now you will watch the last video for today's portion of the staff training. I know that this has been quite a long day already, but please go ahead and watch that. We have one last activity for you today, and then we'll see you again um, on day two of the staff training.